Yeah, very good. Thank you. So let's start with the second part of uh, the course of Thank you. Thank you. So uh, I just like to continue where uh, Mark uh, mentioned this very important expression: the pressure, and the, somehow the root of the pressure uh, is the best uh, guess uh, for the dimension in, in our situation. Uh, and uh, uh, Mark also mentioned a couple of properties, but not only Mark, because also Andy Kainmaki uh, uh, gave a talk which uh, covered part of those things, but I, 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 I otherwise wanted to prove. So, for example, that this SF is the root of the pressure, uh, so the root of the pressure function. Uh, one more time, why is the pressure the best candidate? Because if you uh, go to level n, and then uh, you take the level n uh, cylinders, and uh, these level n cylinders are uh, labeled like i, i1, i n. These are i, i1, i n. These are f, i1, i n. I. Whenever I write this, it is always an n-fold composition, f i composition f i n. So this, these are the cylinder intervals. And if you knew that the best cover in the, in the definition of Hausdorff measure is given by the cylinder intervals, and, and actually if they are disjoint, then there is no reason why they could not be the best cover, then you would look like to take uh, the diameter uh, raised to the power a certain t uh, for all possible i1, i n. So if you take all i1, i n, then these level n cylinders give you a cover of the attractor. And if n is big enough, then, then the diameters are small enough. So this is good. And then this was the sum in the definition of the Hausdorff measure which was to be optimized. Now, if you knew a priori that there is no better cover than the cover by the cylinders, uh, then this is the, the sum which appears actually in the definition of the host of dimension. If you remember, it was right at the beginning over here. This uh, ugly sum which appears over there, this yellow sum is actually uh, 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 this. Uh, so, so in our case, uh, this sum plays the, the role of this uh, yellow sum, what you see over there. And then what we want to do it is choose a t for which uh, this is uh, 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 just uh, when, when this jump happens. So what we do it is that the sum in general is supposed to uh, grow uh, in n uh, exponentially fast. So if this is uh, exponential in n, then you may be interested in taking uh, the exponential growth rate. So 1 over n log is simply the exponential growth rate. If you write lim n tends to infinity, then this will be the exponential growth rate of this uh, person, what you see over here. So if you knew uh, that, that really this is the best cover in this sense, if you knew that this is the best cover, then, then the sum which appears, this would be the relevant expression. Now, you need to take care of the fact that the host of dimension when this jump happens. Now, if uh, you consider this function, which was denoted by pt, uh, uh, and then, then if you take this function, if t is too small, if t is small, what happens then? t is almost zero. t is almost zero, then this one, uh, 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 will be positive. If t is very big, then if t is big, then these people, what you see over here, are going to be small. If t is big, because this is smaller than 1, so if t is big, then this expression is going to be small, then, then uh, this exponential growth rate will be negative. So the place which is the best candidate, uh, so that it neither 
But if, if, if this if exponential growth state is positive, then certainly when n tends to infinity, we tend to, to uh, infinity. When the exponential growth rate of this is negative, then we tend to zero. And the, in the, the boundary is where this PT function is ex exactly zero. Now, uh, the, the good thing is uh, that we know that, thank you very much, uh, Lukas, uh, so, oh, uh, uh, good. Uh, so we, we have this lemma uh, 3.2, lemma 3.2 is the boundary, uh, the, the bounded distortion lemma, and the bounded distortion lemma says that we don't need to be worried what we write, so by Lagrange theorem, uh, this uh, length, this length is f i1 i n derivative at a certain c, then the, the length of this, uh, uh, so uh, maybe multiplied by the length of this interval, original interval i, doesn't matter because of this logarithm and one over n, and, and because of the bounded distortion lemma, it doesn't matter where we evaluate it, so we can evaluate this expression in such a way uh, that we get uh, actually the that we get uh, this uh, supremum, supremum of the derivative, it doesn't matter where you evaluate, and then uh, that's why this, this, is, this gives the importance of this expression. Uh, when you say that the root of the pressure formula, Mark drew this picture about the pressure formula, uh, then uh, this picture, something like this, this is log m. For me, m is what was k for Mark. Uh, so the root of the pressure formula I denoted with SF. So, so when you say that the root, this is Pt, and uh, PSF is zero. So, so if it is true that the root of the pressure formula gives the dimension, this means basically that the best cover is the curve is the most natural cover, the cover by the n cylinder. So geometrically, when you say that the most natural cover is the most economic cover, uh, you can translate this expression into the expression that the dimension is given by the root of the pressure formula. Okay. Uh, uh, so uh, we have uh, started to talk a little bit about uh, the, this pressure. And uh, then Antti uh, actually proved a couple of theorems what I uh, uh, wanted to prove. So, so for example, so I don't need to prove that uh, what I want to say. Uh, 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 here are some, some very basic properties of the, of the pressure formula. Uh, uh, so the, the length of an N cylinder is approximately the, the derivative uh, of the appropriate uh, uh, mapping. Uh, evaluate it at any point, in particular evaluate it at zero, this kind of very simple uh, uh, properties. And uh, uh, what I wrote over here, this is also, it also follows from the bounded distortion property uh, and, the, and the Lagrange uh, theorem. So these are some, some easy um, uh, consequences of the bounded distortion property. As I mentioned already, we frequently we, we will frequently use uh, this metric on the symbolic space. So this is a metric on the symbolic space that we take two infinite sequences, i and j. We, we take the, the common prefix and the cylinder which corresponds to the column prefix has a length and this is the distance. This will be the, the good distance. This is also, also an ultra, ultra metric and this is the meaning of of uh, ultrametric. Um, <coughs> uh, yes, and uh, here is uh, another identity what, what I mentioned uh, last time, that uh, if you take Sn, which is the solution of this almost like self-similarity like equation, you take the equation of this, uh, the, the solution of this equation, then Sn tends uh, to the root of the, uh, uh, tends to the root of the, the pressure formula, uh, and, and the, it can be proven very easily. Uh, I, I, I just uh, quickly, uh, uh, I just quickly mention uh, how, how you can prove this, this assertion. So one more time, you define Sn 
in such a way that you take uh, so so this is the <coughs> sorry uh, this is the solution of F and uh, you take all the level N cylinders, you consider their lengths, and you raise uh, to a certain power Sn, and you sum up for all level N uh, uh, cylinders, so for all level N cylinders, and you solve this equation, and the claim is that this Sn tends to Sn. Uh, and, and the proof is uh, very simple, we just need to use yet again the boundary distortion property. Uh, so we consider S, we write just S for SF, and we consider this expression QN, as it appears here, 1 over n times logarithm, uh, and you take, uh, take uh, well, uh, this is pretty much like uh, what, what I wrote uh, over there, uh, with S, uh, with, without taking the limit. Uh, and then uh, from the from the bounded distortion lemma, uh, uh, what we can uh, uh, you, you can conclude uh, that uh, if S is chosen like this SF, uh, then this QN tends to zero. This is immediate from this uh, uh, bounded distortion. I just like to remind you that the bounded distortion lemma was was this. It had two parts. Uh, one for an individual iterated function system, and the other one will be used for uh, families when you have more than one uh, uh, family. Okay, uh, so from that you get that this Qn tends to zero, and then uh, you can write uh, this uh, uh, power uh, of the, the, the diameter, s power of the diameter, as this product that uh, you, uh, you write the same thing raised to the power Sn and the same thing raised to the power S minus Sn. And then uh, uh, from, from that what we get it is uh, that uh, from, from this what we have it is that this expression on the left hand side is, uh, is at least as big as this because uh, from this uh, from this bounded distortion property, uh, uh, that the, the length uh, of this interval is at least gamma one. So the length of the interval is at least gamma one. Gamma one is the possible smallest derivative. We always assume that all derivative f i x are always bigger than gamma one and uh, smaller than gamma two. Uh, this is an assumption. Thank you very much for ever. Uh, and, 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 and for that, because we assume it for ever and we use a, a bounded distortion, the length of this interval is at least gamma 1 and the length of the interval is at least gamma 2. So this identity gives that identity. And then we are pretty much like almost ready uh, uh, because uh, if we have that, then, then the only thing what we need to do uh, over here is uh, just to compute Qn. So we take the logarithm and divide it by 1 over n. So if you take the logarithm and divide by 1 over n for this identity at the bottom, then it gives you the identity inclusion that I show you on the main screen. And then, because you know that uh, Qn tends to zero, therefore S minus Sn uh, needs to tend to zero. So that, that's the simple reason that the solution of these equations, uh, the solution of this equation tends to the root of the pressure. Uh, now, there are two different things that I also plan to tell uh, you. Uh, one of them is that uh, if you have strong separation property, then the dimension of the attractor is the root of the pressure. But this proof was given by anti kain uh, uh, Monday in the afternoon. So, so I, I would not uh, repeat it. There is something, however, which will be very important later today. And it is the, the Gibbs measure. I believe that most people in the audience have heard about the Gibbs measure, but I just like to recall it. So uh, you are given the symbolic space. So this is uh, 
this uh, sigma is always the symbol in space. I just like to recall it uh, appeared several times last time. Uh, so sigma is um, oh my God. So sigma is one to m to the power m. This is the symbol in space, and uh, uh, we are given a Hölder continuous function, real Hölder continuous function. Then there exists a, a, a unique probability measure supported on sigma uh, uh, on, on the symbolic space and the constant. Uh, such that this uh, uh, identity holds uh, and um, uh, for, for all uh, J, which is an element of the cylinder uh, I. And then uh, uh, this, well, we, we assume that this is sigma invariant at everybody and then, then it is unique. So it's um, uh, that the way as we apply this, the, the way as we apply this, somehow it was also mentioned by, by Antti Kainmaki that uh, if you choose a potential here, if you choose a potential phi uh, which has zero pressure, so if the potential has zero pressure, then you have nothing over here, you, and this is zero, and then the only thing that remains to compare to the measure of an M, uh, an M cylinder is the sum. And in our case, the sum just uh, is going to be the logarithm of the chain rule because for me, either, uh, for us, either this is going to be the good potential or more frequently, if this is phi f, then more frequently we take uh, this s, th there is no s here, this s is, is surplus. SF, where SF is the root of the pressure, so we just multiply, we define this phi as it is defined over there, and then this is good because if you define it in this way, uh, then, then this expression, what you, hear, what you see here, this expression that sum phi and sigma, uh, uh, well, this is j, also j, uh, but this expression, what this expression gives you, it is just uh, basically the length of the appropriate cylinder interval uh, by the bounded distortion uh, lemma. Uh, this is up to a constant multiple. This expression that you see here uh, for this potential by the chain rule, the length of this interval, the length of the appropriate level and interval is just this expression. Now, if you multiply it with SF, because this one contains the logarithm, so if you multiply, it means that you raise this expression uh, to S, so basically uh, this uh, sum, what you see here, if uh, you choose phi, as, as, as I show you on the screen, if you choose phi in this way, then the expression that you see over here is going to be basically the length of the appropriate, the corresponding level and interval raised to the power SF. So, so this sum, the only thing that remains is the length of the uh, uh, SF power of the corresponding interval. It remains and, and this is going to be zero. So from that, uh, you get that uh, this Gibbs measure is uh, for, for the potential that I show is really very important because the measure of an N cylinder in the symbolic space is basically the SF power of the corresponding cylinder interval uh, on the line. Uh, and this gives basically the upper bound. So if we have, uh, if we have open set condition, or strong separation property, then, then this observation, uh, which I just showed you, that we have this measure, this immediately gives uh, that the host of dimension of the set is at least SF, because then we can take this usual uh, game that we uh, let n tends to infinity, we, we consider uh, uh, the, this, this limit, uh, which is the same, nu is the push forward measure of mu always. So nu is the push forward measure of mu. Nu is the push forward measure of mu. 
And uh, if, uh, if uh, the, the, there is no intersection at all, so you have a strong separation, then this measure will be the same as that measure. You can change that and then you immediately get that this limit is going to be SF just by that formula uh, what, we, what we have over there. I cannot show So this formula, this formula immediately implies uh, that this holds and then it gives you that the host of dimension of lambda is at least SF and it is at most SF uh, we have seen from this idea that I started with so that SF is an upper bound, it follows from that idea. So if you have a, a strong separation property or open set condition holds, uh, then the root of the pressure gives the dimension. Now, uh, but if there are heavy overlaps, then the situation is much more interesting. And this is what I would like to talk about now. In particular, I would like to talk about the transversality method. Uh, So, from now on, uh, during the end of this uh, uh, course, I, I'm giving, uh, we, we always consider parameter, one parameter family of, um, of uh, C1 plus eta hyperbolic iterated function systems on the line, so on a compact interval, not on the line, but on a compact interval, and pi lambda is uh, the, the uh, the, the natural projection from the symbolic space uh, and what we assume it is that f lambda continues so this is a continuous family we have discussed what is uh, the, the the distance on uh, this kind of iterated function systems and for that distance we always assume that the iterated function system uh, uh, continuously depends on on lambda uh, and then, if you have such a family, then you, we say that the transversality condition holds for this family. Uh, if uh, if this, uh, I hope that this is visible. Actually, I was told uh, that, that this is not so easy to see, but hopefully you can you can read it. This this uh, expression holds. But I would like to explain uh, the, the meaning of this. So this is the transversality condition. We will use it several times. It says that if you choose two symbol, these are uh, symbolic infinite symbolic sequences, and their first digits are different, then a certain inequality holds. And for the first uh, glance, maybe this inequality is not very inviting. That's why I would like to give you some explanation uh, on the blackboard. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, sometimes I need to use this. So, so what we do it is that we choose two persons I and J. Uh, they are from the symbolic space sigma, and they have different first coordinates. This is important, and we are given such a family. And uh, so, if you are given a family, then for every lambda. You have a function pi lambda which uh, maps, uh, which sends this symbolic space uh, to, to some compact interval in the line. Now, uh, what happens if you consider the following function? You send lambda to pi lambda i. Uh, this is going to be a function. I would like to draw this function. Uh, this lambda is from a parameter interval, usually we denote it by u. So this is the parameter interval u. And then this function, this red function, looks like this. This is the red function. Lambda to pi lambda i. Okay. And then you have another, you have another uh, sequence j. So you consider lambda to pi lambda j. This is going to be a function like this. This is lambda to pi lambda j. Okay. Now, the transversality condition says, this is written in an algebraic way, but I always prefer the geometric meaning. Uh, so it, it, what it says it is the following. 
that it may happen that for different i and j, these two curves intersect each other. It can happen that you find the lambda zero for which the two curves takes the same volume. But if they, if they meet, the blue and the, the, the red curves intersect each other, then they get rid of from each other with a positive speed. That's the idea. And this positive speed is a uniform speed. So they can meet, but as soon as they met, they get rid of each other. They, they go away from each other with a positive speed. So the speed with which, from, with which they get, 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 get away from each other, it is positive. This is written down here in a more algebraic way, as you can read. But I would suggest to keep this picture. Yes? Sorry, you have a funny notation. So you, you require this, this uh, for any i and sigma. For any i and j, be so different i1 and j1. It is written i1 and j1 are different, yes. For every i and j, be different i1 and j1. When they intersect, the intersection is not transversal. The intersection is not transversal. And the, if the intersection is not transversal, they don't share the same if the intersection is transversal, they don't share the same tangent. They don't share the same tangent. But if they do not share the same tangent, then by compactness, there is a minimal angle in between uh, when you run for all rj with i1, j1 different. Uh, if they don't share the same tangent line, then there is a minimal angle for all ij uh, such that the intersection happens uh, under no smaller angle than this minimal angle. Is this uh, clear to everyone? This means that these two people travel. You see, the red person and the blue person travel, travel, travel. They can meet, but they don't like each other. And they get rid of each other with positive speed. This is the idea of the transversality. Another way to think of it is you write f lambda i j, which is the difference of pi lambda i minus pi lambda j. This is a function. So for i j, I oh, always like this. And then this is a function. And this function does not have double zero. The function can have zero, but does not have double zero. This is another way to express transversality. And this is the intelligent way. So yeah, well educated people write it in this way, but I I prefer keeping this thing in. Okay. So transversality goes back to Marstrand. Then then Falconer did very important things. And then in 1995, with Mark Polycott, we published a paper, and that was the time when the stances already appeared for, for, for iterative function systems. And then later, we wrote another paper with Mario Schulbanski and, and uh, Boris Solomia, when transverse already appeared for this hyperbolic, uh, actually parabolic. It was actually parabolic, but the parabolic contained the hyperbolic. So for the hyperbolic stuff, it appeared in. in, in in that paper. Uh, uh, th there was a question of Artem, who is not here now, but about infinite iterated function system. So the parabolic system is related to that, so, so it, it uh, yeah, handles even that. So, so whenever I say uh, transversality, and I, I intend to say it a couple of times, uh, you can keep in mind this, but this is the formula. Everybody can read the formula, uh, and that's uh, an immediate consequence of it. Um, Okay, so the transversality uh, has a, a number of uh, uh, equivalent uh, way to, to state it. Uh, uh, for example, um, if uh, this is a condition A1, A4, I, I will talk about uh, in, in uh, 20 minutes. A1, A4 means simply that uh, we consider now a one parameter family of iterated function systems. Uh, so when you write down such a function f lambda i, when you write down such a function f lambda i, uh, it depends on what? f lambda 
i x. Then in here, what you see, it, there are two variables, lambda and x. And the point is that whenever I say condition a1 to a4, it means that whichever partial derivative you can form from this, uh, uh, you combine as you wish. And then the first two partial derivatives in any kind of combination should be very nice. And uh, basically, so the dependence on x and lambda are very, very smooth. That means that a1, a4, uh, a4 is actually what you see over there. And a1, a3 means that all partial derivative behaves very well. Now, if it happens, then the transversality condition, which is stated over here and also drawn on the blackboard, uh, has two different uh, uh, ways uh, to, to state it. One of them means that uh, there exists a positive eta uh, such that i and j for sigma with different first coordinate. Then whenever these two people are close to each other, then the derivatives are far from each other. This is very similar to if they are close to each other, you see, the two points are close to each other because the tangent lines are different. If they are close to each other, then the derivatives are, are far from each other. Uh, this is one thing. And if they, these two people are exactly the same, this is a picture when they are exactly the same, then uh, the difference between the derivative is a given constant. But everything follows from the uh, picture, actually. Uh, good. And there is one more thing that I need to mention, and this is not our, this is beta transversality, which was introduced by Perez and Schlag. And the beta transversality requirement is written uh, in this formula 33. Uh, what we proved uh, uh, with uh, Boris Solomiak and, uh, and Balash Baran and, and uh, um, uh, Adam Spivak, that uh, if we, if we have the smoothness assumptions, but I will be specific about a little later, if, if this system is very smooth, and if you have transversality, which is over there, so if you have the transversality, then the so-called beta transversality also holds, and this is the beta transversality. So the beta transversality is basically partially stated on uh, the symbolic space. Uh, I just like to recall what was this d lambda, uh, d lambda i j. So the d lambda distance is just the length uh, of the appropriate uh, <coughs> cylinder, the length of the appropriate cylinder, and then uh, uh, this says that if the projected images of i and j are smaller than some constant times this d lambda distance of ij raised to the power of 1 plus beta, then it implies uh, that the derivative, that the derivative of this uh, is bigger than, and then you have the same distance raised to the power of 1 plus beta, and this holds uh, for every beta. It's very important that this holds for every beta. So this is the so-called beta transversality, and Paris and Schlag extended the transversality method in a, in a very, very, very smart and very deep way using a, a lot of uh, 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 harmonic analysis and this was exactly the transversality what they needed but our assumption of transversality implies this for every beta and that's, that's a good thing. Uh, so that's about, I, I like to show you one family uh, we, where the transversality condition holds, because I have mentioned there are many, many families. I just like to show one, uh, uh, and later I will give examples. So what I'm going to do today, it's a little boring. I, I would like to dis, uh, uh, introduce the theorems that uh, we, we proved, and I like to talk a couple of words eventually about the, the proof. And then uh, uh, Friday I will talk about uh, applications. There will be many applications where you don't need to remember anything about the proof. Uh, uh, just uh, you, can, you can use the CRMs as a black box 
and, and I will show you a number of applications. Just now I like to show you an example to think of something. Uh, here is this my, my favorite picture. You fix F1, you fix F3, and you grab F2 and move it up and down like this. So just as if you would weightlifting. Uh, just a little moving up and down. Uh, you add this uh, T and, and then you can find such a family which satisfies transacidic condition, for, for example. The bad thing is that what we, we consider it is a one-parameter family. So we, we uh, have already conducted some research and we are confident that we can extend multi-parameter and we have written a couple of things, but it's not finished yet. But we are confident that if the parameter is not just a real number, and then, then it uh, the same thing uh, holds. So uh, now, first, I need to mention uh, two theorems, uh, uh, which uh, were proved by by uh, uh, Mario Shupansky in Borosolomia and myself. And it says that if the transfer authority condition holds uh, for such an iterated function system, so for uh, C one plus eta, and the derivatives are, are like this. So if you have transfer authority condition, then for almost all parameter, and, and, and you have a measure which is ergodic shift invariant measure on the symbolic space, you have a favorite measure, and you push forward the measure, uh, then the host or dimension of the measure is indeed entropy over Lyapunov exponent, of course, uh, minimum one. And if uh, this ratio is bigger than one, uh, then the pushed forward measure is absolutely continuous. So the transfer authority tells you uh, that both measure wise and dimension wise, it happens what needs to happen, not for all parameters, but look like almost all parameters, as far as you push down a measure. Now, what happens that the other theorem is very similar? Uh, this was published in one paper. And this was published in another paper, by like first and, and second part. And then the other one is about the attractor. So the, the same uh, uh, setup, this is a, a continuous family of hyperbolic C1 plus eta, satisfying a system, satisfying transfer authority condition. And then the host of dimension of the attractor is what it needs to be. So what is this ST? ST is the root of the pressure. So this SF is denoted by ST because it depends on the parameter and for different parameters the pressure function has different root. So now this root of the pressure for the system FT, uh, for the system FT the root of the pressure is ST and then the theorem says that the whole store dimension is what it needs to be or, or maybe I can move there, more convenient. Uh, so the host of dimension is what it needs to be, at least for almost all parameters. And if uh, this ST, the root of the pressure is bigger than one, then the host or the Lebesgue measure of the attractor is positive. Uh, and that's uh, basically uh, uh, the theorem. Now, unfortunately, I am terribly lag behind. So I cannot give the proof. I, I wanted to give uh, at least the proof of this theorem, because that proof was, would show you uh, how we use this transversality. But if I do that, I will not have time. So if anybody is interested in uh, this proof, then I am very happy to, to send you my, my, the, 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 the slides. Uh, uh, just like to, to make a, a, a short uh, comment. So this is the theorem whose proof we are talking about. And then uh, uh, in the proof what we use, it is the potential theoretic characterization of the host of dimension. So we take this uh, T energy and about the T energy, there are two assertions, but you can read over here how this T energy uh, determines the, the uh, uh, Hausdorff uh, dimension. Basically, I would like to give an essence of, uh, of this uh, very, very simply for those who do not uh, have, have never seen it. 
So basically, it is always the difficult part to give a lower bound on the Hausdorff dimension. And if you put these two things together, how can you prove that t is smaller than or equal to than the Hausdorff dimension of e? What you do it is that you find a measure, mu, uh, which is a nice measure, polar measure, and supported on e. So you, you, you just uh, take the most natural measure, the measure that it comes from the dynamics. Uh, so you take the best measure, and what you do it is that you would like to compute this E mu, uh, the, the T energy for, for, uh, for this measure mu. And if you are lucky enough, uh, then it happens that this T energy is finite. And if this T energy is finite, then this implies that the host of dimension is at least T. This is the, the a very, very, very uh, popular method of giving lower bound on the host of dimension. In particular, when you work with families, you are very happy about this method. And let me tell you why. Because what you would like to prove that this T is a lower bound, and not only for one mapping, uh, but uh, for a family, for a family of sets. And then if there is such a family, then for every lambda, you, you have uh, somehow, you, you, you are, or, or this is not a, so, so what, what happens it is uh, that for every lambda, you have basically such an integral. And you would like to express that this integral, because this expression is just an integral, you see, and this integral for almost all parameters, this integral for almost all parameters is finite. Now, how do you express that such an expression which depends on a parameter is almost surely finite, depending on a parameter? You take the integral of this stuff, with respect to the parameter. And then what you can do it is that you can switch the, uh, change, change the uh, order of integration. This is what we do uh, most frequently. And that's why we very much like this method, uh, uh, which comes from this uh, Frostman lemma. And basically this is what we did do uh, uh, when we prove uh, this theorem. But I'm, I'm afraid that we're not going to have time for that. Probably now or nowadays we, we have a 10 minutes break and then, then uh, I, I, I just keep uh, this proof. But this was all that I wanted to say before we go to, to break. This is the uh, old stuff that I have told you all of you now. But what is the essence of these theorems? Uh, just a moment, let me just speak, just a moment before we, we, we go. Uh, here, for example, you take one measure and you push forward this measure, you, you have a family, a family of iterated function systems, but you consider exactly the same measure on the symbolic space for each parameter. You take the same measure. And if you take the same measure for each parameter, then our theorem tells you what happens. But in reality, in many cases, for different, when you are given a family, then for different parameters, the most natural measure, the measure which you are interested in, depends itself for the parameter. That's a problem here. You see, we, our theorem can handle a projection for different parameters, projection of the same measures. But for different parameters, the really interesting measure, the king of the measures, the natural measure, depends, most commonly depends, on the parameter itself. And then it doesn't work. But we did with Adams, Pivar, Polysomiac, and Bolas paradigms to solve uh, this problem under some condition. And this is what I'm going to talk about after the break. Thank you. So then if you want to. 10 minutes. So local time 27. <laughs> 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 okay, uh, uh, look at. <laughs>
could, could you go to the file? Yes, yes. File second, I, I want to pause the, pause the recording. Um, Let's stop the recording.